Now, I don't want to bracket uh, the Prime Minister and his wife uh, in the same league as Matt Hancock and Dominic Cummings, those super COVID rule breakers. Uh, But, uh, you know, and obviously uh, they found a way uh, to get around these rules and they didn't break them. But uh, I would have thought that it might have been wise for two people in their position, given that they would have known that all of us couldn't have our loved ones or our friends over, not to have had someone over to 10 Downing Street for Christmas day i mean that's it isn't it even if they haven't broken the rules it's the fact that everybody sort of thinks they're well i'd say everybody a lot of people in their position you know we talk about the likes of uh, dominic cummings for example and now it does seem the prime minister and his wife as well they think they're terribly clever that's the thing they think they're being clever in finding a sort of a loophole so that they can go ah oh, well technically we're not breaking the rules and the thing is i think when you are prime minister or you're the prime minister's number one advisor you shouldn't be looking to try to very cleverly circumvent the rules so that you can turn around later and go, ah, but it didn't, it didn't break the rules because I'm very clever and this, you know, this is actually what the rules are. And that's, I think, the issue here. It's not so much uh, people uh, thinking that they have because they haven't broken the rules. It's the fact that they feel that they're smart enough to be able to bend them and just sort of explain it away when most people won't have thought, ah, how can I try to be clever to get around the rules because I am such a clever person. They will have just stuck to the rules as they were. And yeah, we're talking about the childcare bubble. I'm led to believe that uh, Carrie Johnson's mother was there with them for the exact same reason. And one does have to sort of ask the question, well, how much childcare do you need? <laughs> you, know, you know, if there's only the two of you and, you know, your mother-in-law, the Prime Minister's mother-in-law, actually, just, just how much, how arduous is this child to take care of? Uh, I should say, uh, Benedict, the Prime Minister's official spokesman said, for the avoidance of doubt, I'm happy to confirm that the Prime Minister and Mrs Johnson's mothers uh, were Mm. not there over the Christmas Ah. period. Uh, So that seems to be their stance. Uh, But but, uh, your point is very well taken. Uh, Most people, what I would suggest that Boris and Carrie uh, didn't do here was to follow the spirit of the COVID rules. Mm. Uh, And people all over the country, uh, they didn't want to not see their friends. They didn't Mm. want to not see their loved ones. But they went along with it because they thought that was the right thing to do. They thought that's what the government was telling them to do uh, to help tackle the coronavirus crisis. And here, as you quite rightly say, we have the Prime Minister and his awfully clever wife coming up with an ingenious way to get round the rules. And that doesn't look right. That looks bad. Well, I'll tell you what, actually, it's, it's interesting now that that's come out, because the last piece of reporting I read on this suggested that, uh, that you know, somebody's mother was there. And <laughs> I think really, perhaps this misunderstanding might not have come up if there had been maybe a little more transparency as to who was staying in number 10 in the first place, rather than, as we say, people trying to get round rules, trying to be a little bit sort of quiet about it. So, oh, well, it is allowed, but let's, you know, let's not advertise the fact. Why was it the fact that you know, everybody knew what the rules were? They couldn't go and see their their loved ones, they couldn't spend lots of time with the people that they'd like to at Christmas. Why was it that these people felt that it was completely fine for them, the cleverest people in the room, to make this decision Mm. and to not actually have to explain it to everybody? And I think, you know, in the long term, I don't think this is going to particularly harm Boris Johnson's image. I mean, all sorts of things have steadfastly failed to shift the poles away from (laughs) them. But, you know, ultimately, it is just another little chink in the armour which sort of just says, do you know what? They don't really care about you. They don't really care about the rules themselves because they do believe themselves to be better than everybody else. And they should have seen themselves in these circumstances back in Christmas uh, uh, when the government did become the Grinch that cancelled Christmas. They should have seen themselves as role models, not people trying to get around the rules. And you're you're perfectly justified to be slightly confused as to what the current uh, uh, orthodoxy is about this because the the rules, the situation seems to be changing almost by the day. Mm. Uh, Lara Prentice the executive editor of The Spectator magazine, who wrote uh, uh, what Boris and Carrie would describe as the offending article uh, for American (laughs) Harper's magazine, Uh, when she put it to uh, the prime minister or to his uh, publicity office, uh, you had your friend over for Christmas, didn't you? Uh, No answer came the reply. Uh, They didn't say anything. Uh, And she said, I'm going to put this in the magazine. No answer. Uh, Mm. So why did they not come clean then and say, well, this was the situation? I'll tell you why they didn't come clean, because they didn't feel happy about it. They'd been kind of found out. Yeah, they they were irritated. They were found out when it came out. They were able to say that they hadn't broken the rules. But they know that this isn't a good look.
But the simple fact of the matter is they didn't come clean at the time because they kind of hoped that nobody would notice, that it would just sort of slip away, that this sort of impropriety wouldn't make the front pages, or perhaps they, perhaps they even thought nobody would read Harper's magazine in the UK, you know, perhaps ignoring the fact that who the journalist was and what her day job is, you know, that making it more than more likely that people would pick up on it. But as you say, if Boris Johnson is going to be prime minister and Carrie Johnson is going to sort of set herself up as this sort of figure that champions certain causes, you know, none of us want our politicians to, to live a sort of entirely Spartan existence. You know, I'm not one of these people who thinks that they shouldn't be paid and shouldn't be allowed to go on holiday. That would be ridiculous. But when you are imposing very difficult measures on the rest of the nation, especially when you personally have suffered and you understand, therefore, how much people are going to suffer as a result of this, it just it doesn't sit well when you try to be smart, when you try to circumvent your own rules, you know, because, of course, you know the rules because you came up with them. And, you know, and then when you get found out to not just own up and go, OK, yes, that was in poor judgment. Uh, you know, we, we possibly shouldn't have done it or said it at the time saying this is who is going to be spending Christmas with the prime minister and his wife. And these are the reasons why that would have been the better thing to do. They just weren't interested in doing that because, again, they think they're better than everyone else. Yeah. Well, Carrie Johnson is not the prime minister. Uh, I mean, she's very free to make uh, um, errors in judgment. Uh, but I do think I, I think it's worrying that we have a prime minister, because if I was the prime minister in these circumstances and my wife said, can I have my best mate over for Christmas Day? Mm. I would say, well, Carrie, under the circumstances, I think uh, that's a, a great big fat no. And mm. yet he he has her over, Nimco Ali. You know, yeah. uh, and I think that is, that's kind of worrying, that lack of judgment. Well, the Harper's article actually was fascinating, not just because of this little breach. The more fascinating bits were when it was discussing the influence that Mrs. Johnson wields over her husband, her role in the Conservative Party before she became Mrs. Johnson, uh, and the fact, of course, that she is unelected. And it's very unusual uh, that, a, that a spouse, that a prime minister's spouse, wields the sort of influence that the magazine alleges that she does. You know, in the past, actually, even though they've been reasonably high profile, we all know who they are, a lot of prime minister's spouses have kept very well away from that side of things, whereas Mrs. Johnson, as it were, has been forged in the fires of conservative politics and is very keen to sort of stamp her, her boot all over it. The article says that people inside number 10 feel that Boris Johnson is ever so slightly afraid of his, his wife. And, it, you know, it touched on the, the, the decorating story as an example of that. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but that's why actually this doesn't this isn't just tittle tattle. This isn't just idle gossip that should just be swept away because it's a very serious question. As you say, actually, what kind of character is the prime minister? What kind of fortitude does he have? What kind of backbone does he have? And is his wife able to trample all over that, not in terms of his personal life, but in terms of his political life? That's actually, I think, what the article touched upon and was of real interest to me, certainly. Yes, uh, I mean, they, they, it referred to uh, Carrie uh, upon meeting Boris as seeing him as, and I quote, a project, mm. you know, that uh, she could take his hardline, old-fashioned right-wing conservatism and refashion it uh, in the mode that we see it now, this kind of uh, what's described as con-socialism, uh, this green obsession uh, and mm. all the other touchy-feely uh, sides of politics that attract her. Uh, she's definitely inveigled him into all of that and in my view has turned him into a worse kind of a politician a politician who is frankly lying to us about his ludicrous green fantasy that's going to cost us all a fortune well in fairness to mrs johnson i think it, it's rare to find a woman that ever comes across her future husband that looks at him and thinks yes that's the finished article very often i think it's <laughs> Very often, I think <laughs> many of us fall short on that front. And Boris Johnson, yeah, as much as anybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, but certainly it is, it's interesting you, you highlight that, don't you? It, because he was this sort of you know, the, the, the Brexiteer and you know, the, the Telegraph columnist who would sort of rail against everything from political correctness to the overbearance of the state. And now he has completely gone, you know, vault face, he's gone in the other direction. And I don't think there's any getting away from the fact that a lot of these causes are things that are championed by Mrs. Johnson. And it, it does seem rather convenient that just as he becomes an, involved with her and married to her, that these things sort of creep up the agenda. Now, politically, they might be very expedient for I don't happen to think they are, but they certainly aren't harming him at the moment. But as you say, a lot of conservative voters and a lot of conservative party members, I don't think are going to be particularly enamoured by them long term. Yeah, I, th I think in the long term, uh, all of this green stuff, for example, will harm him because uh, it is not conservative. And uh, we are being uh, assailed by increasing 
uh, rising taxes. Uh, people do not like that in the Tory party. I think it will harm him. Uh, interesting what you say about uh, uh, all women seeing their husbands as a project. Uh, uh, my wife, after 30 years, I think she very much sees me uh, as a work in progress with much work still to do. <laughs> uh, Benedict, great to talk. Thank you very much. Uh, Benedict Spence, their Conservative commentator.